What's up everybody, my name is Lily Thompson and today we're discussing five places that you can invest and grow your money. But I cannot start this video without saying a big thank you, thank you, thank you for helping this channel reach 1,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate each and every one of you and if you're not already one of those thousand people, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join the party because we are growing and we're on our way up. Alright, so one of the first things that I learned about money is that it's very difficult to make it grow by simply saving it, but investing it can be a different story. At the beginning of this year, the average return on your typical savings account was about 0.1% and throughout 2020 has dropped even further to 0.06%, which means that if you put $1,000 in a savings account in a year, you would come back and you would have earned an extra 60 cents. That's pretty laughable, but we can do better. In today's video, I'm gonna show you five places you could put your money to earn more than just a couple of cents, whether you have $100 or $10,000, and make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you how to turn those short-term savings into long-term investments and really start to grow your money. If you haven't already, hit that like button and let's get started. First on the list, CDs or certificate of deposits. These are a safe, straightforward investing strategy offered by banks where you make a deposit with the agreement that you will not take that money out for a certain amount of time. Because you're telling the bank exactly how much money you're giving them and how long they'll have it without having to worry about you wanting to come back and get it, they in return give you a higher interest rate. The longer you invest the money, the higher the yield. Plus, the FDIC insures these deposits up to $250,000 per person, so they're some of the safest investments out there. The best rate that I was able to find is from Marcus by Goldman Sachs, whose CD comes with a rate of 1.10% and only requires $500 to get started. Compared to the 60 cents a traditional savings account would get you, if you don't need that $1,000 for a year, you could put it in the CD and come back and have earned $11. $2,500 would get you $27.50 and $10,000 would get you $110. I don't know about you, but that's not a great return for the amount of savings that you're putting in and you can't access until the term is up, but there is one benefit to CDs that we can't ignore. The interest rate is fixed. So especially during a time like this, when interest rates are dropping lower and lower, including those on your savings accounts, having your money in a CD means you can rest assured that you know exactly what interest rate your money will be earning until that term is up. Second up, high yield savings accounts. I was able to find a few savings accounts that would get you close to the rate of a CD, but still allow you to have access to your money in the meantime. For example, this online savings account from Barclays pays 1% and has no minimum deposit to open it, but you are limited to six withdrawals or transfers a month, which is typical of any savings account you're gonna find in the US. Something you might wanna look into is going with an online bank rather than a traditional brick and mortar bank, as oftentimes because those online banks have lower overhead and fewer staff members, they can afford to give a little bit of better terms and interest rates. So your savings accounts online may earn you a little bit more than just a traditional bank. Third on our list is something that's not often thought of as a place to put your savings and that is a checking account. High reward checking accounts are different from your typical checking accounts in that they give you a higher interest rate in return for you meeting a set of monthly requirements. For example, Consumers Credit Union will pay you 4.09% on balances up to $10,000 as well as reimburse you for all ATM fees as long as you meet their monthly guidelines. These guidelines come in three tiers. In order to get 2.09% on your money, you'll have to sign up for e-documents from the company, as well as make at least 12 debit card purchases a month, as well as deposit at least $500 of your paycheck every month. The next two options require you to get a Visa credit card through this credit union. And if you meet all those previous requirements like the e-documents and the debit card purchases, you'll get 3.09% if you spend $500 on your credit card a month or you can get 4.09% if you spend $1,000 or more on that credit card. Let's imagine you had that same $1,000 and you were at the highest tier. That 4.09% would earn you $40.90 on your $1,000 deposit. And if you were to deposit $10,000, you would earn interest of $409. But remember that opening up too many lines of credit and having too high of a monthly balance can really hurt your credit score, which would then in turn hurt your chances to rent a nice apartment, buy a nice house, buy a car, or anything else that you wanna do where you're gonna need a good credit score for. If you wanna learn more about credit scores and other things they didn't teach you in school about money, I'll be sure to link this video in the description below and you can check it out after. Another thing to note is that this particular high rewards checking account only offers these interest rates on balances up to $10,000. So if you have more than that, you might wanna consider putting it somewhere else. One option could be a money market account. 
This is kind of a mix between a savings and a checking account. This one from BMO Harris Bank offers 1.25% if you have a deposit over $5,000, but like a savings account does require you to make fewer than six withdrawals a month and keep your balance over that $5,000. So that 1.25% on $5,000 would earn you $62. And if you had $10,000 to put in, that would earn you $125. Unfortunately, as you've probably noticed, none of these saving options are going to drastically increase the amount of money that you have. They're all probably sitting around 1% to 3% average on a good day. That's why I truly believe that saving just for the sake of saving isn't good enough. Once we've saved for emergencies and have a cushion for unexpected expenses, that's when we should start to invest. Now, there are many ways to invest, but this is a real estate investing channel and that's the method that I've chosen to use. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about now. The very best savings option I was able to find out there would get you around 4% on your money, but I'm going to show you right now how you can get a 25% return with less than $10,000. In this video right here, we analyzed different properties and one of them was a triplex in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This property a few weeks ago was for sale for $230,000 and it's now a pending sale for $219,995 and I can see why someone jumped on it. This particular triplex has a studio apartment, a one bedroom apartment, and a two bedroom apartment. If you chose to live in the studio, you could get a total of $2,200 from the other two units. And because you're living on the property, you can use an FHA loan to put 3.5% down, which is $8,000 and all of that would put your monthly mortgage payment at about $1,520. So you're bringing in $2,200 a month and you're paying out $1,520 in terms of your mortgage, insurance, and taxes. And because we know that owning a home comes with all different types of expenses and unexpected things that you're going to have to pay for, we're also going to set aside $450 a month for maintenance, vacancy, all that good stuff. That's going to leave you with $230 a month left over. So check this out. You invest $8,050 as a down payment and let's say another $2,000 in closing costs, bringing your investment to $10,000. You're making $230 a month after you've paid off all of your bills and set aside some for expenses. And that means you're going to make $2,760 every year. In order to determine what percentage return this is, you take that yearly amount you're making and divide it by your initial investment, which in our case is $10,000. That equals 0.276% or a 27.6% return. In my opinion, that's a much better place to put your $10,000 than in a CD or a high yield savings account. Not only do you have a property that you're controlling and that you live in for free, but you're also building equity as well as getting a much, much higher return. Now, investing in real estate is not easy but it is something that you can learn. And hopefully this channel will be one of the resources that you use to do that. And if you don't have enough saved up yet for a down payment, some of the options we talked about in this video are really great options while you're saving or to hold on to your emergency fund. But at some point, I definitely recommend you turn those savings into investments. Thank you guys so much for your support of this channel. We made it to 1000 subscribers. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope that me sharing my investing journey with you guys is helping you on your own journey. So comment below, let me know where you guys are at. I want to know who's on the other side of this screen. I can't believe there are 1,000 of you supporting me, but I really do appreciate it. I do my best to post videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday when I'm not feeling sick like I was this last week. So I appreciate you guys waiting for me and watching this one. Until next time, thanks for watching.